due to a recent series of unfortunate events, I found myself looking for a new digital multimeter. Now, if you guys have been watching this channel, then you know electrical testing is something that I do a lot. And over the years, you guys have asked me what do I recommend as far as a digital multimeter, and I don't really have an answer. The most common thing I say is get whatever fits your needs and your budget, which is kind of like vague or whatever, but now you guys are going to get to see what I'm looking for in a digital multimeter. Keep in mind that I'm not affiliated with any manufacturer or brand. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. This is all on me. Now the first thing I did was I came up with a list of all the things that I want the multimeter to be able to do. Now since I already have this snap-on meter and it did everything I needed it to do, I really just needed something with the same capabilities. So what do I want the meter to be able to do? Well, I definitely wanted to be able to do volts. Definitely want it to be able to do ohms. I definitely want it to auto range. Auto range, like it says up here at the top of the snap on one, auto range means you can just set it to volts and it'll automatically go in the right range scale. A good example of something that doesn't auto range would be like the amp scale here. Really at work, I don't have time to sit here and figure, well, do I need to be on the 400 milliamp scale or the 4 milliamp scale? I don't have time for none of that. Let's just auto range it and be done with it. You know what I mean? I'd also like it to have a beeper for the continuity tests. I think we've only seen the beeper test once or twice on this channel when we wanted to make sure we were on the right circuit. So it's not something that comes up a lot, but I do want it to have a beeper. No bullshit lead sockets, meaning these little things right here. What I want to be able to do is to use everything I already have in the new meter. I don't want some shit where they've got proprietary leads that I have to use and I can't use anything else I have because I have a very vast assortment of leads. Now, all this stuff up here, I would consider all this to be for DIY, which means you guys watch some videos on YouTube and you, damn, I really fucked that thing up. Means you guys watch a video on YouTube or read a technical article and you want to follow some voltage tests or whatever. Your multimeter should just be able to do these things. In fact, up to this point, everything that you guys have seen, whether it's on YouTube or on internet forums, they could have been done with either of these two meters. Now, since this is what I want the meter to be able to do, there are going to be a couple more things on this list that I personally want because a lot of what I do, it goes beyond the scope of what we do here on the internet. I want an analog graph for fast voltage changes. As far as I know, I think I've showed this one time on this channel but in real life I use it quite a bit. I want min max. I want to be able to back probe a circuit and go for a ride and see if anything happens to the voltage. I also want a dedicated millivolt setting so I can use my low current probe with it. As you can see on the snap one it does have a millivolt setting which I would use with the low current probe. This one doesn't have it. It had a, what they call a clamp adapter setting and I could not get my low current probe to work with this thing. So, we'll call this, uh, we'll call this Super Tech. This is all I want the meter to be able to do. If we could do this, we could test voltage, we can do voltage drop tests, we can ohm out sensors, we can ohm out solenoids, we can ohm out wiring, um, we can do continuity tests, we could look at speed sensors, cheating of course, we could min-max, record data riding down the road, and we can use our low current probe and we can pretty much do everything and beyond what I've already showed on the internet over the past couple years. You know what I'm saying? This is all I want. I don't need a fancy kit with a whole bunch of accessories that I'll never use, like a temperature probe. Don't need any of that. So now that I know what I want the multimeter to be able to do, let's talk about the budget. So what's my budget for a new multimeter? Well, this thing, if I remember correctly, now we are going back almost two decades on this thing. But it was somewhere around 70 bucks, maybe 60, 60, 70 dollars for this. And this thing lasted me for years. Uh, when I worked at the dealership, it's what I used to diagnose problems. Well, problems way, 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 way beyond what I've done here on the internet. And I go back like five or so years ago and I was looking for a good backup multimeter, you know, one that I could have at home and leave the other one at work kind of deal. And I got cut a really, 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 really good deal on this snap-on multimeter right here. I've told you guys before, it's nothing fancy. You don't have to go out and spend 300 some dollars on this multimeter to do these tests. This thing has been able, would have been able to do pretty much everything that I've shown so far. 
I only got this because I got a really, really good deal on it. You know what I mean? In fact, the deal was so good, I think I got this thing for 130 bucks brand new. So here I've got a multimeter that's lasted me almost two decades for 60 bucks. I had one that lasted me, you know, five years of frequent heavy use, you know, for 130 bucks. So what's ultimately my budget? I think $150 budget is more than reasonable. So with the list of the stuff I wanted the multimeter to do and a working budget, I went looking. Now if you go on like popular online retailers or auction sites, it's going to be overwhelming. I mean, look at these numbers right here. I mean, there's a lot to choose from. So I took the time to do some research and eventually things got whittled down to where there was three contenders for the new meter. The first contender was another 504D because these things are going on eBay brand new for like 130 bucks. So this is definitely within the budget that was a top contender. The next candidate was the TPI 183A, I believe. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I think it was the 183A. It pretty much did everything I wanted it to do. It worked within the budget, and something about it caught my eye. It looks suspiciously similar to the Snap-on meter. I mean, even the font that's used on the push buttons up here, it's eerily the same. One might believe that TPI actually made this meter for Snap-on. And the third contender was one of Amazon's recommended choices or whatever, and that was the Fluke 117. You know, I've always felt that Fluke meters were overpriced considering that I could take a 60 or $70 meter, go into a dealership and diagnose all kinds of electrical problems. Like, I don't see the big deal in having a Fluke, you know what I mean? I think it was more of a, you know, you're just paying for a name kind of deal. But the 117 could do everything I wanted to do, so it was definitely, you know, a contender. If it can do what I wanted to do and it can fit within the budget, then there ain't no reason why it can't be on the list. So I had my three contenders, I had the budget to buy a new multimeter, and I went to the internet and I decided not to go with either of those three. I ended up getting a Fluke 77. The reason for going with the Fluke 77 was really because of the price. I got it secondhand on eBay. It does everything I want the meter to be able to do. It fits the budget. That's not to take anything away from the 504 or the TPI 183 or the 117. Uh, like I said, this just fit the budget. It did what I wanted to do and I just went with it. So here she is, the Fluke 77. I got the list here. It can do volts. It can do ohms. It's auto ranging. It's got a continuity beeper. There's no bullshit leads. I mean even my low current probe. Uh, right in that guy. It's got the analog graph, we can do min-max, and it's got the dedicated millivolt setting for use with the low current probe. So to answer you guys' question about what meter should you get, well, get something that does everything that you want it to do and something that fits within the budget. I mean, I don't think any one of these meters has an advantage over the other, except for the fact that these two don't work anymore, but that's besides the point. You know, for doing any of the things you guys have seen me do over the past couple years, any one of these meters will work. You know, whether we're doing voltage tests, voltage drop tests, where we're ohming out sensors or solenoids, or even following wiring, doing some continuity tests, you know, any one of these would have done the job. And the price difference is pretty substantial because, like I said, I think this was like 60 or 70 bucks, while a new 77 goes for like close to 300 bucks. So it's a broad spectrum, and both of these things can do pretty much the same thing. This might not be as super accurate down to the point zero 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 one decimal place but it'll still tell you if you've got voltage these multimeters can do pretty much everything that that automotive multimeter can do some of these automotive multimeters have extra features like being able to take temperature or read rpms i've got other tools to do stuff like that i can't justify you know, an extra three, four hundred dollars on top of what I paid for the fluke, you know, just to be able to take temperature or read RPM, whatever. Well, I hope this answers one of my frequently asked questions about what multimeter do I think people should get. Again, I'm not going to tell you what specific multimeter you should get. One that does what you need it to do and one that fits your budget, that's all you need. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention when I was looking for a new meter and all that was amps. I mean there's a reason that I have this low amp probe. It's just for doing stuff without being invasive. Of course amperage testing is critical if you're a real mechanic who does it every day. But for the most part we don't really do that for do-it-yourself troubleshooting. I'm not going to mention any names 
but something did happen to this meter um, a day or two before our last mission together. What? I just, I just touched the meter. You want to touch the meter? Yeah. Look at the dress. Now maybe it's a coincidence, but a day or two later, I had a crazy electrical problem, and that's when I started having a little problem with the dial on this thing, and then eventually it just, whatever happened, broke off, and she just freewheels in here now. So, what happened here? The selector switch broke on this thing. She still works. But I can't find replacement parts for this thing. So that thing broke. I'm like, you know what? I've already used it to fix hundreds, if not thousands, of electrical problems. It doesn't really owe me anything, so no big deal. So we'll just go ahead. We'll use the backup until we get something straightened out. I don't have good documentation about what happened on this car, but what happened was some idiot wired the outputs from a HID ballast to a regular 9006 connector. So when I went to test for voltage for this low beam headlight not working, it was unknown to me that it was actually hooked up to a HID ballast. So I guess 22, 25,000 volts or some shit went through this multimeter. And after that, that was all she wrote. She kind of wants to turn on. She kind of tries to turn on she's cooked. So that wasn't all for the series of unfortunate events. Not only did I lose both of my multimeters in one week, but I also lost my power probe too in the same week. That thus completing the series of unfortunate events. Now since the power probe 2, the one that I keep at work is dead, I had to move my power probe 3 from my house to my work, and now I'm going to be looking for a replacement for my power probe 2. Now I've showed this thing hundreds if not thousands of times. We've done some crazy shit together, so it's only fitting that I tell you guys about our last mission together. So our last mission together at work I had a Pontiac G6 and the complaint was that the driver's door was acting goofy. Now what I mean acting goofy, the power window didn't work, the power mirrors didn't work, the power locks didn't work. And what I noticed was when I would press the button to move the power mirror, I believe to the left, I could almost hear the door lock actuator trying to work. Which is weird, and most people would say, ooh, scary electrical gremlins, uh. But, not for me, it's no big deal. I popped the switch out for the mirror, back probing the circuits to it, nothing really matched what the diagram showed. So, it gave me enough evidence to go ahead, pull the door panel apart, and see what was going on. So what happened was, some idiot was replacing, I think, the window regulator in this thing, and they hooked two of the connectors up backwards. So that kind of explained why you know, circuits from the mirror switch, we're trying to make the lock actuator work. And that was our last mission together. So I want to take the time to say thanks. You know, even though I think you're really a TPI 183 in disguise, um, you've handled business over the last five years, and I want to congratulate you on all your hard work and accurate diagnosis. So thank you, sir. It's been real. So yeah, it turned into an expensive week the other week at work. You know, between losing both of my multimeters and my power probe, I'm like fuck, man. Something's got to start going right, you know what I'm saying? It sucks and all, but think about it. Y'all have seen the Snap-on used hundreds, if not thousands of times. I've used the Craftsman hundreds of thousands of times, way before the internet or YouTube or any of that stuff. Same with my Power Probe 2. Probably got that thing probably back in 04, 05 maybe. Used that thing hundreds, if not thousands of times. So really, they've all paid for themselves. They all don't owe me anything. It was just unfortunate that I lost all three of them in a single week. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. I know this is like the second video in a row that's related to tools or whatever, but it's my channel. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. If you don't like it, I vape in your general direction.